I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him. Only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world. Fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness. Swear an oath not to harm her son. once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Seno explored new paths into the unknown. 
Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Not in this world. Oh dear. He's the reason she's alive at all. He cared in a way that nobody else did. doesn't know who killed him, but we do. She thought she had light within her witch. She is pure darkness. Dillian saved her. You owe your life to Dillian. You owe everything to him.
The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear. He believed in you.
Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking part. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst. Years into had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go. And she was caught between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past. And Dillian. Her future. Two realities. We tearing at her soul. to your father when you had the chance. Why didn't you listen to him? This love has tortured you and it tortures them. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur. Weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone trees, metal, everything, except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let Hel keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. She remembers him.
precious to you. Dillian didn't deserve this. Does it feel warm? Do you feel safe? Dillian loves you. What if this is pointless? What are you doing? The Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then so must we. Do you remember the way he stroked your hair? Do you remember the way he felt? He's the reason she's alive at all. He was the only one she could trust. Could she trust him? chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see. And he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms. Had to see the world through his eyes. Slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. Go to him. Go to him. That's it. Quicker. 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 Your father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. My own father was born blind. He doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. The word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? 
But you give up the beautiful world that you, only you can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? The gift that makes you so special in my eyes. Just another part of the person I know. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. Killing you would be too easy. They're taking your memories to torture you. They're taking you from the inside. You're and disappearing out. one memory at a time. Every time you remember, it disappears. They're going to take everything. They're not yours anymore. They're going to take everything you have. The memories of ghosts. They belong to the gods, not to you. They're eating you from the inside. They want to kill you. They want to crush you. Northmen say that their all father, Odin, gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness, there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason, I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua. Here. Can't you see me? Help me. Breathe slow. It's the darkness. Stay still. Empty your thoughts. Tell me what you feel. The breeze. Good. Then there is a way out. I can't tell where it comes from. Yes, you can. The others, the voices, they've gone. I'm still here. It's so quiet, so dark. It's okay. Listen to your own breath. Feel it rise and fall. Good. Be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you. I think I'm somewhere else now. The breeze has gone. Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? I hear water. Go to it. Reach the water. Good. That's your way out. 
follow it upstream. So sorry. I thought I left this all behind. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of me. It won't let me go. Shannon. My father. He taught me the hardest battles are fought in the mind. Not the soul. And no coward. You don't have to help me. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great one. You need to I'll do my best. inside. Don't be afraid. There's more of them. I think they're moving. You're breathing too fast. I'm scared. Listen to the sound of your breath. In and out. In and out. do this anymore.
think I'm in a house. It stinks. Of death. The darkness is testing you. But you are in control. As well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. Did you help me? She could spend hours, days even, trapped within herself. were open, but you were gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere, with no memory of how she got there. When it comes for me, I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought you found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Hela as an equal. So Dillion was helping me. And a sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift. of darkness. Leave it. No. He left it here. He wants me to take it. You will pay a price. 
price for this. But years later, with Zinbal's parting words still haunting her, the darkness came back with a vengeance. A plague. Do you? Everyone suffered. My father was not supposed to die like this. This is your fault. <laughs> you brought this plague to us. <laughs> you have blood on your hands. They're coming for you now. They're coming. They're coming to get you. Hold your heavy strike. Hold it. Hold your heavy strike. Hold it. Unleash the sword. In the sea of corpses, the corpse waved through itself over the ones I loved. The ship broke up under them. The ship that had sailed from the land of shining fields. Their memorial stone is sacred. Come not here in the sun. Come not with a sword. Come not crying over a naked corpse. Come not with disturbed minds. the suffering, Senua. Does your precious gift of sight let you see the souls that rot here in this sea of corpses? Do you feel the blood running cold on your skin? Do you hear their endless cries? Do you smell their putrid wounds? They were once brothers, sisters, and loved ones. And look at what you have done to them. All because you were empowered, because you ran from your curse instead of facing it. When you turned your back on the Father Zimbel, he turned your back on the gods and let the darkness wreak havoc on your people. Why must they pay for your heresy?
Galena. Where are you? Do you hear this? Do you hear the voice of your mother, Galena? She calls for you, Senoa. Go to her. Answer her pitiful call. Darkness took her life, and it will take. Thank you. 
of sorrow with your brethren as you want to let your blood seep into the seas of the rivers of hell. Isn't that what you deserve of the fool you've done? Give the darkness what it wants, let it swallow your soul and destroy all that you are. Why are you fighting for someone who is already dead? Just look around you. What hope is there for him, even if his soul could be rescued? Do you think he would thank you for what you have done to him, to his friends, and to his father? I can't fight it anymore! Not on my own! Where are you, Mother? I want to be with you. That night, she gave up on her world to follow in the footsteps of her mother. To go to a place where the darkness couldn't reach her. Senua. Look at me. Do you hear them? They're calling for me. We've lost so many. And I've lost my father. I can't lose you. You said it. I have blood on my hands. I didn't say that. You've done nothing wrong. Zimba was right. Everyone will suffer. Zimba is a fake. He is a hateful, bitter liar. He's poison. And his words still haunt you. Who do you trust? Him? Or me? Do you still believe in me, Senua? In us? Come back to me. battles are fought in the mind. He gave her the sword with which to fight in more ways than one. And she gave him her word, never to surrender. All 
she needed was a little help. 